light, and you're gonna hiss like that. Good morning. One second. You good? You on the screen? Just relax. Where we at? We'll stop over. Explorers. Get the bag. Get the bag. Everything in focus. All right. Another day, another stream, that's right. And you gotta draw, you've all gotta draw. Turns out I was wrong yesterday too. Turns out you actually should draw if you wanna get better at drawing. I'm as surprised as anybody else. It's morning coffee. Practicing. And I'm drawing this kind of stuff that I like. I don't know what you want to draw. Maybe you want to draw stuff you hate or that other people think you're supposed to draw. But me personally, my personal taste, I like to draw the stuff that I like and find interesting. It's not for everybody. You know, some people like drawing stuff that they're totally disinterested in or drawing things that they really just don't want to be drawing but some random person on the internet told them they should be drawing it so they draw that you know if that's your thing that's that's for you that's for you but don't judge me while i draw the kind of stuff that i think is interesting and cool Draw what excites you. What excites me is adult men with interesting faces yawning at county fairs, which fortunately you can find hundreds of great photos of on the Earth's World Instagram account. over to my bigger sketchbook for these. I always tend to do these little portrait sketches a little bigger than usual when I'm working from reference. It's easy to keep them small when I'm working from my imagination, but when they're from rough, they tend to blow up a little bit. Rodrigo, hello Brian, hello Happy, hello M Lord. Earth's world is a genius, Angster. Love me some Earth. If you've never checked out Earth's world account, Earth wor Earth's account, the link is in the description below. I've been following Earth for years. Always a favorite. I'm glad to see Earth's numbers blowing up as well.
Any more portrait photographers you'd recommend? Nah. Earth's all I need. All other portrait photographers shoot in like, they shoot beautiful people or they shoot people in really soft lighting to make them look more flattering and aesthetic. And it's utterly undrawable. Hold on a second, I'm gonna try to sneak my chat onto my other monitor here. Is that gonna work? Oh, well then I can't see anything over there. Sorry, having a little technical issue here trying to get the result that I want. Truly. Next, who do we want to draw next? Good. 
You came early, any reason? Nope. Yes, doggy. Well, grunting about it isn't gonna make it any better for you, pup. Eugene Dream with the 10 Canadian dollars. Thank you so much, Eugene Dream. That's incredible. Thank you for waking me up from my cryogenic sleep. Thank you for hovering creepily over my sleep pod, indecisive for a few minutes, biting your nails before finally deciding that it was time to awaken me and notify me about the things that have gone wrong on the ship below these last several generations. Thank you, Eugene Dream. Now we can begin our dip into insanity. Now our work is eternal. I hope you also investigate the Patreon. If you give me $10 on Patreon, you get all sorts of benefits. Discord, early access to the YouTube videos, high-risk scans of my drawings, in-progress shots, the occasional not-YouTube-appropriate audio rant. I wouldn't want you to be missing out on that. Have you ever wondered how good your drawing turns? Or is it all like standard for you? I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean, silence. Maybe there was a typo in there or something like that.
doing art with little expectations really does produce the most alive and expressive art a lot of the times, yeah. Put the person to sleep and let the demon draw. Let's do a little itty bitty one. Show right in here. Drawing buddies, drawing companions. Mutual drawing companionship. The adventure of a lifetime. For $14.99. Get not one. Get not two, but 117 drawing companions shipped right to your door in six separate eco-friendly packages. But wait, there's more. Order now and get Bob Ross's soul in glass mason jar for free. Absolutely free. That's right, you heard me right. $14.99 for Bob Ross's soul in a glass mason jar. Call now. Supplies will not last. What would you actually do if you had Bob Ross's soul in a jar? Uh, set it free, of course. Actually, I guess first I would present it to the scientific community. Like, what the? It's a soul! Oh my god, they're real! Oh no! Please, study it! We have to figure this thing out! How is this possible? That's the first thing I would do if I actually had Bob Ross's soul in a jar. It would very quickly not be about Bob Ross. It would be about the greatest discovery in the history of science and philosophy. And then I would have a lot of people to apologize to. extra loud in my neighborhood today. Apologies. If you can make it out. There's construction going on next door.
that's the best Instagram account? It certainly is. It certainly, certainly is. Tips to draw small details. You have to subordinate them to um, the overall design of the drawing. That's the real trick of it. You can start by just every time that you draw a detail, just inquire, ask the rest of the drawing the rest of the painting, whatever you're working on. Right before you put the detail in, ask the rest of the drawing. Rest of the drawing, what do you think? Now your drawing is gonna have a different answer than somebody else's answer, right? There's no one answer to anything in art. The point is just to get used to asking and to evaluating. Any choice is valid. The problem is just that most artists don't ever even make a choice. They just do things thoughtlessly. You can do great pictures with subdued details and you can do great pictures with overwhelming, totally dominant details. The key to making either one work is to just make sure that it's actually aligning with your goals. But in order to do that, you need to do something that most artists never do, which is get clear on their goals for a picture. You need to know what you want to be dominant in the picture. You need to know what you want to be subordinate in the picture. You need to know what you want to be the emotional tone of the picture. Should be easy, but it isn't. Do you have any tips on drawing faces on a small scale? I have trouble simplifying. You just look for little slashes when you need to do a really small face. So, you know, at this scale, a face might be able to contain lots of little lines like all of this. But at a small scale, let's say you needed to draw someone in the background, you would only look for this. Eyes. Brows. <laughs> I did them cross-eyed. Nose. Corners of the mouth, and that's it. And you leave it like that. And you can find all sorts of likeness and variation in just those tiny little calligraphic strokes, right? Because if I do them If I do them like that, totally different character, right? Totally different likeness. So you just wring the most that you can out of these like 15 little strokes.
I'm a lefty. It's really tough to draw both eyes simultaneously. What? I don't think your handedness really has anything to do with that. And uh, unless you're Karl Kapinski, try not to draw both eyes simultaneously. <laughs> fun to paint. He has such a broad, wide open light area. That'd be a nice little task to paint. There's another one that would make a great painting. It would be so fun to paint all those skin wrinkles. It looks kind of like that Grinch painting that we just did. How much value do you think there is in mindlessly copying your favorite artist? I don't think there's much value in doing anything mindlessly. Mindfulness is the way to go. Hold up, I'm gonna fix my exposure here. Mindfulness doesn't mean um, being neurotic at all or anything like that. Or being utterly distracted by paying attention. But yeah, I think it's better to do just about anything, especially in art, mindfully. that one up fast. No, well. You can't win them all. lip shape. And there's like no peak in the middle. It bows up instead. Man, she's got some cool lips. Ah, so unusual, so specific. Ah, specific. That was supposed to be a um, Mikolash from Bloodborne Impersonation. <laughs>
you know, in a photo, the way that her eyes are kind of like divergent a bit. In a photo, it works. We just accept it because we know it's a photograph, but it'll always look wrong in a drawing. I'm not going to fix it though, since I'm just studying here. I'm just going to leave it since that's what's really there. But that's the kind of thing that if you're doing a creative work, you, uh, you should always lie about that. Almost always you should correct that because you're not a camera and people will know that they're looking at a piece of art and they will not give you the same leeway that they will give a photograph. If you were to choose just one muscle memory exercise to improve drawing in general, which would it be? Muscle memory exercise? I mean, any exercise that you do will create muscle memories. Yeah, I, I don't, I disagree with the question, my good sir. The best one would always be the one that aligns with your goals, you know? If you know that you want to be a car artist, you should just sketch cars every morning. If you know that you want to be a pinup artist, you should just sketch pinups every morning. If you know that you want to be a monster artist, you should just sketch monsters every morning. The best exercise is just the one that aligns closest with your goals. The problem is that most artists don't know what their goal is and don't know how to figure it out if they've never thought about it. And if they can name it, they don't understand their goal. You know, they think, oh, I want to be a concept artist. They have no idea what it means to actually design things or what that job looks like. They're just hopelessly backwards about all of it. tell you this whatever your goal is if you can't even take a guess at what the day-to-day -day is like the real day-to-day -day, like what would you do in eight hours you've got no clue
that's where her neck departs from. But God, that's going to look very weird in a drawing. You know, in a drawing, you kind of want to explain the neck connecting to the, um, what's that process behind the ear? The mandibular process? Some nerd in here knows it. Eva, you're officially jobless. Is that good? Bad? Did you want that? Drink some coffee, some valuable coffee. Man, my wrist sounds like a mouthful of pop rocks today. That can't be good. You wanna hear me turn my wrist? Shut up, Joe. I do not have arthritis, even though my mother or my grandmother 
have horrible, horrible arthritis. I'm in big trouble here. <laughs> Who knows how many drawings I've got left in me. <laughs> oh, she's got a cool face. Yes, I love how it like it looks like it bows in and then back out. Ah, oh, that's a tough one. How do you draw that and make it convincing without it looking like a mistake? That's so good. Even Eugene jockeying for mod positions. Sorry, I, I sell mod positions like indulgences from the church. You gotta pay for that. It's all abuse of power on this channel. Did I even say anything there? It's all abuse of power on this channel. After all these years, I'd be comfortable when committing to a nose, but it never gets easier. victory from the jaws of defeat, in fact. Ooh, those are itchy little shapes. Itchy, itchy little shapes.
got hot in here. I'll be right back. I gotta open a window. Yeah, look, it's gonna be loud. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't draw all sweaty. Sam Lamb, hello Sam Lamb. I didn't see what you said, but I saw someone added you. <laughs> I think as I got better at drawing, I stopped seeing things as they are, but just puzzles of shapes, you know? That's definitely a stage in seeing the world. But don't worry, the world will return. Draw what you see, then draw what you know. hair ever going to come back? Do you think like getting perms will ever become a thing again? I know anyone who perms their hair curly. But everything's a cycle, right? It's very hard to get the characteristic wrinkles in crow's feet without completely blowing up the drawing. Whoops, that messed it up. Oh well. <laughs> Who's next? Oh man, look at him. <laughs> Mr. Cool. <laughs> man, he must have been a riot back in the day. That's awesome. down views might be nice. That one's pretty sweet. <laughs> An 
adds to the immersion. That's funny, because it does not add to the immersion for me. <laughs> these sounds when I'm like an hour and a half into a meditation and then they're God's secret language but any other time but that I hate these bastards Some tricky shapes. Those are some tricky shapes right there. He can't hold it. I've got it. I've got it. He's gonna lose it. No, I'm not. Not bad back there, kid. Those are some tricky shapes around the mouth. But you ain't fooling me. I know you just got lucky. If you want to survive those kinds of shapes next time, you better sharpen up. You should go see my man Chromantheus over on Planet Zelectagon to Zuaco do that wow one down to nine. If you want to learn the real chic secrets of riding weird shapes around the mouth, He's the person you want to see. Well, person may be a bit much. More like sentient puddle of protoplasm. side of the face.
Punch Ham says, when you start drawing a face or a full body, do you start the same each time or approach it differently each time? Um, a lot of the times I start with the eyes, but I will approach it differently a lot of the time. I try to base where I start just off of um, what's very clear, what would make for a very clear starting point. Something that has a very defined shadow shape or a geometric shape or something like that. What playlist is playing? This is a uh, lo-fi girl slash chilled cow. This is their Spotify playlist, lo-fi girls favorites. You can find that if you click through on the links in the description. A lot of people discussing my drug use. A lot of people discussing my drug use. Did you ever do yoga with your meditation? No, I've done yoga a couple times, but it's never stuck with me. It's only you, Joe. It's only you eating cottage cheese. about drawing faces straight on in portfolios from a while back makes you cackle, Alex? I'm afraid I can't remember what I said. I can imagine what I said, and I can't remember the exact situation you're referring to. It was supposed to be cold today. Why does it feel so hot? The sun's not even hitting my window. The weatherman lied to me. That man who pulled me into an alley earlier and told me he was the weatherman lied to me. Where else can we sneak a? Where else can we sneak a face? Maybe in the top right, over there. Let me just add some clothing to this one, making it up. Just 
to balance the page a little more. Dare do it, dog. Really? You had to get out of your crate to go do it? Just right when I told you don't do it? I'll show one more here. For beginners with no background in drawing, is it better for them to practice drawing realistically to start with or just start or just draw with no style? Um, I mean, if you have no background in drawing and you're really a beginner, um, I, I'm not trying to be like dismissive or flippant or anything like that. I really think the first thing you should do is just turn off all thinking about what style I draw in or what I should or should not be doing. Just commit a, at least an hour um, with some regularity, right? It doesn't have to be every day. It could be every other day, twice a week, whatever you can realistically do. Give yourself an hour where it's just you, a piece of paper and a pencil, and just increase your personal intimate relationship with the pencil. Get to know it, have fun with it, talk with it. Let the pencil tell you, oh, I hate this. Ooh, I." I love that. Just keep developing that. And don't let annoying thoughts about what the style is, is this the right thing I should be doing as a beginner, blah, 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 blah. Don't let that get in the way. Don't let that get in the way of dating your pencil, of getting to know it, of taking it out to the movies, of giggling with it after winning it a big teddy bear at a county fair. Like, just do that part first. And then later you can discuss like, all right, well, you spend too much money on Thursdays when you go out with your friends and we don't have enough to get that house that we want to get. So like save that for later, you know? concerns around art as a beginner are only going to confuse you and put you on the wrong path. It's like, you're a beginner. You are the last person in a position to evaluate what style you're working in or if you're doing the right thing or if you should stick with this style longer. You're just like, you can't even see what you're drawing, you know? Like you have totally delusional ideas about it. You think it looks better than it does. You think it looks worse than it does. It's like, that's the painful truth of being a beginner. Um, so don't, don't get caught up with that stuff. That's not how people start out well, you know? The practical concerns, they're, they're, not, they're not what art is about. Increase your joy first. Introduce the practical concerns once the joy is well in hand and you feel a connection with your medium.
wish I had room for this guy's whole face now. He has such a good face. Why, oh why did I decide to draw in my little sketchbook? I should have drawn in my big chubby sketchbook, my thick sketchbook. I should have drawn in my chubby thick sketchbook. This guy's eyes, at least the way that I drew them, with the mustache, remind me of, um, remember in Parks and Rec, the, uh, the alternate Ron, the, like, zen version of Ron? The photo doesn't look like him, but for some reason my drawing does. Cool. All right, let's take a little break here. See what's up in chat. We fill the spread. There's our morning peanut butter spread. Stefania always sketches from this Instagram account as well. Yeah, man. Earth rocks. All of this is practice to be able to draw that, that right there. That's the real art. All right, what are you guys talking about in here? Simon says, Stephen, tell me honestly, what is the one and only overarching, all-encompassing, yet simple, almost trivial drawing exercise that will instantaneously grant me infinite skill and wisdom? Um, Bacon says, 
In a more fully realized drawing, how do you tackle the more unusual features they often present? Focus on the likeness or something that makes more sense to the eyes? Uh, something that's like middle level finish, I'll tell a bunch of lies. Like if a nose is too crazy, I'll pull it down a little bit. If the eyes are too asymmetrical, I'll make them a little bit more symmetrical. Um, usually the eye has an easier time accepting that. But in a very finished drawing, when you say fully realized, if you're really gonna render everything out, um, there you can go into it and just do the real craziness. Because um, if you actually render all of the forms and make all of the shapes transition into each other correctly, it'll look right to the viewer, for the most part. There's some things that just never quite look right, but for the most part, if you're going to carefully model everything and make all the forms transition and interact correctly, that is what makes the viewer interpret something as correct or real in a drawing. Like the fact that things don't unnaturally abut each other or transition too suddenly or anything like that. Do you know any other places where we can get photo references? Not good ones, everything else is garbage. Earth is the only person taking photos that are actually useful to artists. Everything else will give you same face syndrome. Everything else will make sure that you never understand form because you'll be drawing washed out photos that are lit from the front. Literally every other photo in the world is a garbage photo that does nothing but hinder your progress and make you go backwards, actually. Okay, you know, Scott Eden's Bodies in Motion has some pretty good stuff in it. Um, the new Masters Academy Academy photo sets are very nice. They're lit with one, one light source a lot of the time. I've drawn from them a lot, but um, I don't have a new Masters account anymore. You can find a bunch of them floating around for free online underneath a company banner that is now defunct called Draw This. You'll see the little draw this logo at the bottom of those photos, but those were always nice reference photos. Um, what else? Where do I go for reference photos? I don't know. Where do I go for reference photos? I've started commissioning my own photos recently, so I could just ask the model to do them exactly the way that I like. High contrast, one light source, things like that. It depends on your taste. Again, so much of this stuff comes down to looking for, knowing your goals, knowing what you prefer, knowing what you actually like, what your opinion is, and then finding that, finding things that align with your opinion. Steven, have you ever considered drawing in something like Magma Studio with some of us for morning draw longs? Uh, I'd consider it, no promises. As, as I say with everything on here, basically everything sounds fun to me at some point, but the reason that I do this is because I'm just doing whatever I want. So if I make any promises, that'll just make me not want to do it. But I've done stuff like that before. Any shortcuts and strategies for Art Master speedrun any percent? Nope, they don't exist. They don't exist. The closest thing to a shortcut that I have ever seen to become a very good artist quickly, the people that I know who did that the fastest, they all shared one quality, which was that they always knew exactly what they wanted and they weren't confused. They, and they didn't spend any time doubting it. They had a mental image in their head of that's what I want my stuff to look like. And they didn't let themselves get deterred from that path. They never let themselves get beat left and right. If they did, it was for like a day, you know, it was never like months of confusion. And they would do absolutely whatever it takes, whether it was boring or fun or just anything, to make their art look like that. Um, and those, everyone that I know who had like a truly meteoric rise, they all shared that quality. 
but that's not really a shortcut or a strategy because if talent looks like anything, it might look like that. Just clarity on exactly what you want, which most artists do not have. Uh, and it's not something you can force, I don't think. I was having art block for like a month, but ever since I've started watching your videos, it inspired me and I started feeling better about my art. Thank you. Aw, oh, that's great, Amson. Hooray, congratulations. Fantastic. Any general advice on drawing hair? It's so easy to get lost in the intricate shapes. Um, imagine if it was like made out of plaster or something like that. That's the usual thing that I advise. Imagine it's a general shape and look for where the light would sit on it, look for where the shadow would sit on it if it was made out of plaster. Um, knock that in first and then just break it up with some stringies and little choppy shapes and things like that. My pleasure, Bob. And yeah, Adam's awesome. Adam's channel is great. Hey Steve, how many hours do you think Kim Jong Gi draws a, draws a day on his younger days? I don't, you'd have to ask him that. I have no idea. Hello Steven, do you know if it is possible to become a concept artist of art in cell shading? Um, yeah, if you just focus on studios that need cell shading. The thing with concept art is that everybody pretends it's one job, but it's not. Concept art is a million different, not a million, it's like 7,000 different jobs uh, masquerading as one job, but none of them are the same. So yeah, you can be a cell shading concept artist. You just need to go for cell shading studios and products and projects. You're guilty of downright crippling art jealousy. You gotta get rid of that. It ain't useful. Just be happy for people. Okay, Steven, honest question this time. I've been studying from Charles Barg's drawing course recently and I'm really enjoying it. Have you studied from it as well? And if so, what was your experience? Uh, I have, yeah, it's great. It was uh, very influential on me, I would say. It's been a long time, but I never did a real I never did a real Barb drawing. Like I never did a perfect one-to-one -one copy that takes like a month, which is what you're quote unquote supposed to do. But um, I never did that because my goal has never been to draw uh, solely from reference. My goal has always been to draw from imagination. So I don't really spend much time at all measuring in reference drawings because I can't measure an imagination drawing. Uh, at least these days I don't do that. So when I was doing bar drawings, I just copied the plate intuitively. Um, I would spend a while on it, you know, I'd copy them for several hours or something like that. Um, and I did a few, I did a bunch of them. I wouldn't say anything was super in intense. None of them ever looked like perfect copies or anything like that. Very good stuff to study. The main thing that I take away from Barg is that you only need a precise, careful core shadow to create structure. Basically perfect structure. Basically fully three-dimensional feeling structure. If you are careful enough and skillful enough, you can get that with an unbelievable amount of solidity and believability just out of one solid flat value in the shadows and a beautifully modulated roll out of that one shadow. Barg taught me that. And uh, it's hard to believe until you've seen it. You know, the Barg plates are really just proof in the pudding, like all the details that you're adding are barking up the wrong tree. And that was the biggest thing I took from Barg. And I lived by it. It influenced the way that I drew a lot. Thank you, Peter. Mm -hmm. 
Do you think I could practice figure drawing from photos instead of in real life? I'd love to take figure drawing classes, but they're three hours by train from my home and I wanted to prepare for animation uni. Yeah, you could practice from photos. NBD. How do you struggle with artist block? Artist block does not exist. It's just a personal block. You're just projecting it onto the art. Artist block isn't real. It's never about the art. It's that you're depressed or you're bored or you're comparing yourself to other people or you're doing something that you're not interested in. Artist block is not real. It's a, it's a very bad label very bad piece of nomenclature of something being named uh, and the way that it was named is so bad that it has given people a sickness that doesn't exist that they make real just because the name is so bad artist block is not real draw for a little longer, maybe 10 minutes longer. And then it's going to be lunchtime. Let's see who we get. Dropping by. I'll draw this one a little sloppier. Put down some proportional base. how the side of his face like from his eye to his like underneath his eye from his eye to the corner of his mouth on the left I love how it's just like a straight vertical drop and that's so cool it's just so cool What's up, Steven? Taking a look at your live makes me realize I should do more personal projects more. I've been slacking at it for a bit. Uh, well, you know better than anyone all of my opinions on that, Amber. Don't forget your projects. gotta do the thing that you think you want to do you know
It's crazy how many artists think they want to do something. Like, I want to be an illustrator. I think I want to be an animator. I think I want to be a designer, a concept artist. And they'll go years not doing it. They'll, they'll tell themselves that they want to do that and they've never done it. They refuse to try it. They just assume they're not ready. And they do all this other stuff and somehow trick themselves into thinking that they're getting ready to do the thing they could just be doing. It's just fear. That's just fear. Being very afraid of seeing bad results. You just gotta get over that. You will see bad results. That is a given. That is going to happen. But nothing will ever prevent that. And the longer you put it off, the harder it's gonna be for you to swallow those bad results. I was always designing. That's how I learned to design. I learned how to design by designing. I learned how to draw by drawing. By doing them both, they spoke to each other and trained each other. But if I had only done one or the other, never would have, the other one never would have come up. It would not have made me better at the other one. I can only do the things that I can do because I did both. I always did both. Were my designs horrible while I was bad at drawing? You bet. Who cares? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Practice the thing, the thing, practice the thing that you think you want to do. Hold on a second. Construction is just getting way too loud. I couldn't bear it anymore. <laughs> what if you're afraid of good results? I haven't addressed that, have you? No, I guess I haven't. You got me there. Yeah, Nat, Nat of Five makes a good point. Everyone should check out Earth's, um, Earth's website as well has more photos than what's on the Instagram. And uh, they're also higher resolution and they're cropped different. So a lot of the times you can see the people's bodies and their clothing and stuff like that, which is just as interesting as the heads. If you like Earth's account, you really owe it to yourself to go uh, check out the website. Do you have any tips for someone who is preparing to become a drawing teacher? Just make it about the students. Make it about the students. Don't, um, don't make it about the grades that you have to give. Don't make it about the institution. Don't make it about what you need to do to try to pretend that it's objective so that you can give grades and seem like a serious teacher and all of the other stuff that inevitably makes people drawing teachers that students hate and don't learn anything from. Just make it about the students. 
as much as you can, as much as you can bear to do it. I know I'm in a privileged position because I get to run my own workshops now, so no one gets to tell me what to do. And uh, I don't have to please anybody else but the students, but as much as you can bear it, just make it about the students. realistic let me help you draw realistic as best you can you want to draw cartoons let me help you make the best cartoons you can make you want to do comics let me help you make the best comics you can make you want to do anime let me help you make the best anime you can make Art and drawing teachers are often so jaded, depressed, and disappointed in themselves that they don't even realize how often they're ruining people's lives with the stupid crap that they say in the middle of art class. They'll literally just thoughtlessly fling something out and a student will carry it with them for the rest of their life and it'll make them quit drawing or make them do weird backwards practices or make them think that they can't do the thing that they love. It's like one of the most heartbreaking, horrible, stupid things you could do. Is my pen filled with sepia ink? You bet. Are these sounds from New York? You bet. Yeah, it's Pilot Sepia Ink in this pen. Man, I'd go insane if I had to listen to these sounds every day. Yeah, it's especially bad today. You know, the kids in, are back in school, so they spend the morning running around in the playground and doing their favorite thing, screaming! And right next to the school, there's a building that is undergoing construction. It's a little loud. And down the road from me is a truck depot. So there's 18 wheelers pulling up and down my block all day, all day. And you know what the craziest thing is? I sleep like a baby.
All right, people, it's just about lunchtime here. So I'm gonna hop off in a couple minutes. If I can be useful to you in a couple minutes, just let me know. If you have any last questions or anything like that, throw them in the chat. I'd like to thank my patrons for making this stream possible, especially all of them, just all of them. of the eyes to the nose quite different. God, it's fun to sketch. world like sitting with a sketchbook and some interesting artifacts of the beautiful varied gorgeous world that we live in and doing some sketching there's just nothing better uh, go to his brows to the bottom of his double chin and then from the brows up to his hairline that's about double sparkle little finger calipers like this Oh my goodness, that's far. That is so very far. What a jump. I do like to do a little light measuring for something that wide, because uh, I just know from experience that I'll always guess it much smaller than it actually is. So I just want to educate myself on, whoa, how wild it out there space actually is. anatomical knowledge, knowledge to draw these portraits or do you just copy? Um, I use my form knowledge, not really my anatomical knowledge. I mean, there's some... The face, ironically, is like the place where anatomy knowledge is the least useful, you know? Anatomy knowledge is really the most useful on the body. On the face, you know, it's interesting to understand that like the orbicularis oris determines the direction of like crow's feet wrinkles and things like that, but... In reality, the face is not its muscles, you know? The face is bone structure, right? So just the places of the face where skull, like noticeable chunks of the skull show up and fat deposits. And understanding that is much more useful. Um, so I really consider that like form knowledge instead. You heading out? continuous contour in your sketches? No, not really. Last one came out pretty good. Glad I measured that jump up to the hair. I want to 
doughy lunch so bad, but I don't want to leave this drawing completely abandoned. Just got to get the ear in there. All right, we can leave that guy there for now. He doesn't really have huge shadows on his face anyway, so. Doo -doo -doo. Fun drawing today, everybody. That was some fun drawing today, I'll tell you what. So we did those two gentlemen and that spread. Little spread. What do you recommend a brand new person to drawing start with, practice with? We kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but don't just fall in love with the medium. Just draw a lot. Just get very comfortable with your medium. Just spend an hour with some regularity, just drawing and connecting with it directly. And don't put any pedagogy or methodology or anything like that um, in between you and the medium. Is studying the Asaro had a good idea? Sure, I've done it. Has any other art forms such as sculpting or photography helped improve your drawings? Yeah, sculpting has. It really connects you with form. Any course you recommend to buy to, buy to learn digital art from zero? Um, I would start with just watching some free tutorials on YouTube to see if you're really okay with digital, um, how you feel using like tools and selections and stuff like that. A lot of people just bounce off that stuff and they're like, this isn't fun at all. I don't want to do this. And then if you like it, um, Ahmed Alduri's Meds Map is very good starting point for digital painting. I would say, because he, he's one of the few that starts with geoforms digital. I think that'd be a good thing to check out. Do you enjoy the work of David Lynch? Yeah, I have. It's good stuff. Happy to make your magic, your morning more magical. Yep, draw box is good. I haven't done it myself, but I've heard many good things. It comes very well reviewed. People I trust have done it and learned a lot from it. What are you going to eat? Uh, corn salad for lunch. Tomatoes in there, some cilantro. Oh, now I'm hungry. Now I gotta go. Now I gotta go. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for drawing. Maybe you drew along and drew some of these wacky heads. Have fun today if you're doing more drawing. And um, I will see you soon. Thank you for drawing today. Take care, everyone.